Welcome in to Outkick the Show. I'm your fearless leader, Clay Travis, coming to you early uh, today on this, what day is it, Wednesday? Because I've got so many different obligations throughout the course of the day. Bunch of advertisers, lots of interviews, got a kid piano recital. Um, can barely keep up with uh, the day. I'll be on Martha McCollum at 2 o'clock Central, 3 o'clock Eastern, 1 o'clock Mountain, noon Pacific. As soon as Clay and Buck ends, and Clay and Buck, as always, 12 to 3 Eastern, 9 to noon uh, on the West Coast, uh, 500 affiliate stations nationwide. Thank you for all of that. We got a bunch of breaking news already this morning, um, and I'm going to dive into a bunch of it. Uh, There will be presidential debates in June and September at least. Trump has agreed to the first debate, which will take place on CNN June 27th, which is the earliest debate that has ever occurred in um, any kind of modern presidential history that I can remember. Trump has told Biden for some time, any time, any place, anywhere, uh, what the details are of that CNN debate. People will actually watch CNN on that day. Uh, June 27th, I've got a lot of thoughts about it. Also discussion that there may be a debate in September. Uh, Netflix has added two Christmas Day games paying $150 million total, $75 million per game. They have a three-year Christmas deal that was just announced. Harrison Butker, under fire, Kansas City Chiefs kicker, uh, for what he said about gender roles, marriage, and uh, and family in a commencement address at a Catholic college uh, in the past few days. We will discuss. Caitlin Clark made her debut last night. Game was boring, her team is bad, and she did not play well. Is this just first game jitters, or is there something more ominous afoot there? Uh, Minnesota Timberwolves. Minnesota is, I believe, the most cursed, Minneapolis, most cursed city in America when it comes to all four pro sports teams. That is NHL, NFL, NBA, Major League Baseball. Minnesota always chokes the Minneapolis, uh, St. Paul area, the Twin Cities. They have given up a 2-0 road lead as Nikola Jokic has taken over. Uh, They have now lost three straight and face elimination. We'll talk about all that. But I want to start with the presidential debates in June and September. This morning, in a calculated attempt uh, to set the debate agenda, The Biden administration released a video of Joe Biden saying that he wanted to debate twice with Trump June and September. This was a calculated decision. Uh, The video jump cuts. And for those of you who don't know, if you watch the video of Biden, it's like 20 seconds long and they had to splice together multiple different versions. For instance, whether you love or hate me, I'm going to sit here and talk to you for around a half hour right now. There will be no cuts. This is 100% live. There are no teleprompters uh, out there. I don't know if you can see. This is my entire notes for everything that I'm going to say on this program. Sometimes the the tilting uh, nature of the lights makes it a little bit hard to read. That's it. I've got one uh, yellow legal pad. I do the same thing for Clay and Buck for three hours. I will have a few notes, bullet points here of what I want to talk about. There's nothing else. There's no prompter. There's no jump cuts. There's no change of uh, camera. This is just me talking directly to you as I do pretty much every day for hours at a time with limited to no notes and no teleprompter involved at all. They couldn't even do that with Joe Biden for 20 seconds. What's going on here that Biden would decide that he needs to change the uh, trajectory of, uh, of the campaign? He's losing, and I think he's losing big. Uh, Trump came on with us yesterday, and if you heard that interview, Trump said that his internal polling has them up one in uh, New Jersey, that they believe they can win Minnesota and Virginia, that they believe they can win in New Mexico, that they believe they can win in New York. That is five states that nobody's talking about at all. Minnesota, New Jersey, New York, Virginia, and New Mexico. If Trump wins any of those five states at all, 
this race is not going to be close because we know Michigan, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Georgia, Arizona, Nevada, those six states, all of which were won by Biden in 2020, are all in play and considered the consensus battleground states. But Trump's opened pretty big leads in Georgia, in Nevada, and in Arizona, such that Biden seems to feel like he's in real trouble there. That would require Biden to win Minnesota, uh, sorry, to win Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania. He would have to sweep those states as well as keep the five states that I just said yesterday Trump told us he believes he's got in play. To me, this is an indication that Biden's internal polling is bad, that he would decide that he has to do the earliest debates of all time and that he wants to kind of shock the body politic with a June debate that's designed, I would imagine, to kind of uh, serve as a State of the Union-like event where he tries to establish in late June to everyone, hey, I have the ability to actually do this. To me, this is a sign of desperation from Joe Biden. Usually, the challenger is the one that is desperate for debates. This feels desperate to me from Biden. Remember, Biden is spending tens of millions of dollars right now, way more than Trump. Trump is currently on trial in the Alvin Bragg uh, business uh, categorization dispute that is business records dispute that is not really moving the needle at all. It doesn't appear that the Jack Smith D.C. case, the Fonnie Willis case in Atlanta, or the Jack Smith South Florida case are going to go to trial at all. Hunter Biden is about to go on trial in June. All of this is working against Biden, and frankly, this feels like a desperate ploy from Biden to try to alter the narrative arc. I have been saying for some time, if you listen to this show uh, or you watch this show or you listen or watch Clay and Buck, I've been saying that if Biden hasn't moved the needle appreciably by Memorial Day, which is what, like 10, 15 days from now, that it's a sign that things are really problematic for him. The fact that they want a midsummer debate when many people, that's a Thursday, June 27th, evidently in Atlanta, Trump's going to want a live studio audience. There will be a lot of debate about who should be present, who will not be present, who will the moderator be, how long will this go. Uh, All of those things will be supremely important here uh, on June 27th. But what stands out to me about this is it feels desperate for Biden to need in the middle of the summer uh, this attempt. I also believe wanting the debates done by September is a sign that he doesn't think he's going to do very well and he wants people to forget about it by the time we get to the actual voting date in November. I don't know that there's ever been a presidential calendar where there were no debates at all in October. This feels to me like an effort for Biden to try to get the debates done and then give himself time to recover by the November 5th uh, actual election day and not have to have this hanging over him in October where it has a major October surprise element to it. So I think all of this, very fascinating uh, as uh, as you uh, break all of uh, this down. We will discuss a lot on Clay and Buck in a bit, but that is what stands out uh, to me in general. Uh, Netflix, breaking news that just came out this morning Netflix has now added, and I want to make sure I get all of the different places out there uh, that are going to be carrying this now. Netflix has added Christmas Day games coming up this Christmas, two of them. Uh, Wall Street Journal reports $75 million per game, $150 million total. Who is playing in those games will be announced soon, I would bet you're going to get the Kansas City Chiefs in one of those games. Uh, Netflix tweeting out, you can't spell Netflix without NFL, um, and uh, they will have live Christmas Day games. Now, this now means that for NFL fans, and I'm a big NFL fan, I am a season ticket holder for my awful, never uh, uh, making me happy Tennessee Titans franchise, This now means that you will watch or need uh, all of these subscriptions, Netflix, Peacock, Amazon, ESPN. I believe ESPN Plus 
the NFL Network, CBS, NBC, and Fox. That is either eight or nine different networks that are going to uh, that are going to be carrying games. I mean, this to me is wild. And I'm going to be hammering this, and I've been writing it. I don't feel like anybody else hardly out there is speaking up for the average sports fan. By the way, Crockett Coffee, crockettcoffee.com, among many other things that I do, and I have like 28 jobs right now, I now have, along with my radio show co-host, Buck Sexton, a coffee company named after Davy Crockett, It is phenomenal. I start off my mornings drinking my own coffee company out of my own coffee company mug. If you haven't already, go subscribe, crockettcoffee.com. Ah, delectable. Unlike sports, that's crockettcoffee.com. Unlike sports, uh, I actually am trying to take care of my uh, audience. This is not good. And I tweeted about this yesterday as Major League Baseball continues to slice and dice its overall uh, product offerings. We're going backwards. When you have to have Netflix, Peacock, ESPN Plus, and Amazon all to be able to watch NFL games, either regular season or postseason, it used to be that everything was on CBS, Fox, and NBC. And then they added in a cable game on ESPN. And I think most people out there could watch the NFL as they saw fit with relative ease. Now all of these sports leagues are taking as much money as they can. The streamers are stepping in, and the overall viewing experience is getting worse for the average sports fan. And almost no one will speak up about this and actually discuss how it's becoming worse, but I do think it is significant. Uh, The direction that we are headed And it's not beneficial to the average sports fans. A part of me feels like uh, Apple should go ahead and buy uh, Disney slash ESPN. Uh, In my opinion, Netflix should go out and buy somebody. Uh, Amazon should go buy Fox. And all of these games should just go ahead and get taken care of with the networks. Um, I don't like the idea of having to sign into streaming services. I talked about yesterday, the streaming services are now trying to bundle back together, but it's just way too complicated. When you're talking about needing eight or nine different subscriptions or channels to be able to watch the NFL, which used to be available with only an antenna, that was the NFL's big selling point was, we're going to make our games as easy as possible for you to watch. I'm very anti-streaming. I think it's worse for sports fans. I think it's more expensive. I think we are moving in a bad direction from the cable and satellite bundle uh, in the direction that we are headed right now. Yesterday, this blew up. You may have seen me tweeting about it last night. Harrison Butker, who is the Kansas City Chiefs kicker, very successful kicker, went and delivered a commencement address at a religious uh, event Um, uh, sorry, a religious event at a religious college. I believe it was a Catholic college. And as a part of that, uh, he said things that are considered to be controversial. Uh, And so I want to read among the things that Harrison Butker said uh, and allow you, uh, I'd encourage you guys to go read it for yourself. Uh, But this is what was considered controversial. Uh, Here is what Harrison Butker said. I'm reading from a transcript. I think it is you, the women, who have had the most diabolic lies told to you. Some of you may go on to lead successful careers in the world, but I would venture to guess that the majority of you are most excited about your marriage and the children you will bring into this world. I can tell you that my beautiful wife, Isabel, would be the first to say her life truly started when she started living her vocation as a wife and as a mother. I'm on this stage today, able to be the man that I am, because I have a wife who leans into her vocation. I'm beyond blessed with the many talents God has given me, but it cannot be overstated that all my success is made possible because a girl I met in band class back in middle school would convert to the faith, become my wife, and embrace one of the most important titles of all, homemaker. Um, This is considered to be controversial. 
And I hope Butker doesn't apologize in any way. Lots of people in sports media are coming after him. This is crazy to me. They're coming after Harrison Butker more aggressively than they are actual wife beaters or actual woman beaters than they are the actual Kansas City shooters uh, at the parade celebrating the Super Bowl. Remember that story? It vanished as soon as it turned out it wasn't uh, some white guy supporting Donald Trump who was a mass shooter. The story just vanished. Oh, it was just gang violence. Oh, sorry, that doesn't matter anymore. Sports media just abandoned that story. And they're coming after Harrison Butker more aggressively for his beliefs on gender roles than they are men pretending to be women who decide to uh, to uh, to actually win women's championships and compete in women's athletics. So I think this is crazy. Uh, now, commencement addresses in general are designed to give life advice. So let me give you a bit of life advice myself. Uh, my wife is a Vanderbilt lawyer. We met at Vanderbilt Law School. She is, as a result, super, super smart. She has multiple graduate degrees. I have multiple graduate degrees. My mom uh, went and became a microbiologist. She worked in state labs for most of my life uh, as, a, uh, as a state employee, state of Tennessee employee, looking at strep throat cultures. She used to take our own strep throat cultures and take them into the state lab and check and see if we had strep throat back in the day when I was a kid. Um, my mom and dad both worked. My grandmother, uh, on my mom's side, was a school teacher in Georgia. She worked back when women were not working very much. When she was asked why she would work, she said, my grandfather worked for a living, and she worked to make life worth living. Um, her whole life uh, worked as a school teacher. Neither of my grandfathers ever graduated from college. The man that I was named after, Clay Travis, from Muhlenberg County, Kentucky, uh, had an eighth grade education and worked in the DuPont factory in Old Hickory, Tennessee, which is how my family ended up in the Nashville area. I say all of that for this reason. Um, I encourage everybody to go get the best education they possibly can, male or female. But in my own experience, our lives got way better when I was making enough money that my wife didn't have to work anymore. My wife was a school guidance counselor in uh, Williamson County, just south of Nashville here. Um, all of her money that she made went to pay for daycare for our two youngest sons at the time. Uh, daycare was incredibly expensive. Our life, and I believe our kids' lives, got far better when she no longer had to work, and when she was able to focus full-time on being a mom. She would tell you, I think, the same thing. It wasn't just a little bit better. It was way better because we didn't have the craziness in our lives. I used to get the boys up in the morning. I would feed the baby the bottle. My wife would already be off because school started early. I would take them to daycare. I would then come back home. I would run out kick. I would then go do radio. She would typically pick the boys up. It was a frenzy. And I know a lot of you out there with young children in particular know what I'm talking about. So the data reflects what Harrison Butker is saying that if you are fortunate enough to be able to have one parent out making a living and the other parent focusing primarily on raising children, that's actually the best possible way, I think, for most families to raise children as effectively as they can. Now, I certainly understand in this day and age, a lot of families can't afford to do that, and both the mom and the dad need to work. And I don't have a problem if the gender roles are reversed. If your wife makes a killing, and you're the guy, and you're making $45,000 or $50,000 a year, and you're paying $60,000 a year in child care, and it makes more sense for you to stay home, I don't begrudge that choice. Every family has to make the best financial decision for itself. But the data reflects that the best possible household to raise children in is two parents with one parent able to focus as the primary caregiver. That makes sense. I understand it's a challenge. I understand it might be an aspirational role, uh, goal, I don't understand why Harrison Butker's position on this is remotely controversial. 
He's not saying there aren't other families. There are lots of great single parents. There are lots of great grandparents who take on the job and responsibility of raising children. Uh, there are lots of dual income parents who hire nannies and that works well for them or put their kids in daycare. None of those things are an issue. Again, my wife has double graduate degrees and is a Vanderbilt trained lawyer. When your kids get older, you have more flexibility when they're in school. My mom took off for seven years from her career when my sister and I were young and she went back to work when my sister started kindergarten. I think that my sister and I benefited immensely from my mom being able to take those seven years to focus on being our mom. And then when we went back to school, she went back to work because both of my, employ both of my parents were state employees. Neither one of them ever made more than $50,000 a year. They needed to have two incomes to be able to raise my sister and I in a way that they wanted to. We went to public school, public school K through 12, uh, lived in a, uh, a decent suburb, but in no way ostentatious, right? That was the lifestyle that I grew up with. So I understand and appreciate women out there who become highly educated and make uh, a living, but I don't think it's wrong to say in a commencement address that you believe that your life has been as successful as it has been because you, Harrison Butker, were able to go out and make millions of dollars a year in your chosen career, and your wife, as a result, was able to focus entirely on raising children. That aspirational life goal is actually something that I think most men and women out there would aspire to at some point in time, especially if you have multiple children, that one of you is able to focus full-time on the kids and the other one is able to make such a good living that you don't have to both work full-time while trying to raise kids to say nothing of how expensive childcare is. As I tweeted out last night, childcare was more expensive for my two-year-old and my baby when we had them in childcare, not in a super high end childcare, very middle of the road, uh, a, a low, a victory learning centers. You can look it up on Hermitage, uh, I think it was in Nashville uh, area, not a super lucrative uh, high end childcare service. I was paying more at that time for my two year old and my baby to be in childcare than I would have paid to have them enrolled at the University of Tennessee going to college. So trust me, I understand how overwhelming the cost of child care can be. And I'm the guy who's sitting around here saying we need more babies. So, but I don't see anything that Harrison Butker said that was remotely controversial. The goal of a commencement address is to share your life path and encourage the graduates to think about that as your life advice going forward. It isn't to say this is the only path that works. It's to try to impart the wisdom that you have gained from life to a younger generation and help them to think about what the future might be. A lot of women in sports media and a lot of sports media in general are overwhelmingly reacting, saying, oh my goodness, cut him. I saw people saying, you got to cut him. How dare he say it? I didn't even see him say anything remotely controversial. But why is this a threat to you? You should have the right to live as you believe happiness most likely is going to dictate for you. You shouldn't be required to live in any particular fashion. Take his advice or don't take his advice. I just told you my own experience as someone who's been married for almost 20 years and has three kids now, 10th grader, 7th grader, 3rd grader, our life when I finally had the financial resources to be able to take care of my family without my wife having to work got immeasurably better. I think that's true for a lot of people out there. I also understand that it's an aspirational goal because of cost of living right now. Uh, but I don't see anything that Harrison Butker said that is deserving of, of censure or that should be considered unacceptable. Um, and by the way, if you disagree with him, you're more than more than uh, able to, uh, to to share your own perspective, but to suggest that his perspective isn't valid because it doesn't reflect the life choices that you've made is, I think, just a fundamental failure to understand how the marketplace of ideas works and what the purpose of commencement addresses is in general. Also, also, 
The same people who scream that they would never want someone to shut up and dribble always tell on themselves as soon as an athlete says something other than woke left-wing talking points, they immediately lose their minds and say they should shut up. I've argued for years, go read Republicans Buy Sneakers 2, my book, before this book, by the way, that I noticed is not currently up. I said any athlete should be able to have any opinion they want under the sun. I don't think it makes sense to do it in uniform at work. I think that's bad. I think if Harrison Butker came out and took a knee because he didn't agree with gay marriage being legal, I think that would be a poor choice for the NFL. But I think every player should feel comfortable going and speaking at a commencement address and saying exactly what they believe in the larger universe uh, as a part of that. Uh, so, uh, so anyway, that is, uh, that's my analysis there of this Harrison Butker controversy. Um, Kaylin Clark debut was boring. She had 10 turnovers. I believe she only scored 20 points. Uh, the Indiana fever, I think is her team name, whatever it is. I'm curious to see how many people watched my take on this in general is as follows ominous people say, what do you mean? It was the first game. Yes, it was the first game. It's 100% correct. Uh, and she deserves the right and will have the right to get a lot better. And she will uh, because she's going to have to learn how to adjust to the pace of play, adjust to speed, all those things. But Caitlin Clark didn't look like a top five player in the WNBA. Uh, why does that matter? The only reason people are going to watch Caitlin Clark is if she's dominant. The reason people watched Iowa women's basketball was not because Caitlin Clark was one of the 25 best players in college basketball for women. It was because she was the best. If she's not a top five player in the WNBA, and right now she's not close to it, the amount of interest in the league is going to diminish in a hurry. The reason that she could bring an audience with her is because of her dominant play. That's what attracts people to watch. Women's college basketball has an ingrained fan base. There is no ingrained fan base at all for the WNBA, even though they've been playing now for whatever it is, 27 years. Interest in Caitlin Clark in the WNBA will turn into Lynn Sanity. Remember Jeremy Lynn when everybody cared about him for a short period of time, the Asian point guard? If she isn't a top five player and if her team is not very good, both of which looked likely to be true in the first game of the season. If that is true, then there will be an immense lack of interest in Caitlin Clark, and the WNBA ratings and media attention are going to plummet in a hurry. Caitlin Clark has to be a top five player in the WNBA, and her team has to be good and win. If neither of those things are true, Interest in Caitlin Clark is going to vanish, and it's going to vanish in a hurry. Now, it's only one game, and certainly, you know, she scored 20 points, uh, and uh, she did have 10 turnovers. But if there isn't a lot of uh, success in year one, the Caitlin Clark frenzy is going to turn into Lynn Sanity. She has to be top five player in the WNBA eventually. She's not close to it right now. And her team has to get far better. Finally, I'm about to go sit down and do Clay and Buck. The Minnesota Timberwolves have blown a 2-0 series lead. And maybe I'll put a pin in this and talk about it with you next week because I feel like the Timberwolves are going to lose again in game six and the Nuggets are going to do something that hasn't happened in a long time, which is lose the first two at home and then win four straight to eliminate the team that they're playing against. If I am correct in that, the Timberwolves are going to continue what has been and is the most tortured existence of any American sports city in the country right now with an NHL, NFL, NBA, and Major League Baseball franchise. The Twins haven't won since I think it was 1991. Over 30 years now of futility, there is no comparison. No city in America has gone as long with a championship drought and had as much failure along the way because most of the time Minnesota's teams don't even make the playoffs or don't even win playoff series when they're there. No city in America with all four major pro sports franchises is more cursed right now than Minneapolis-St. Paul, 
Nobody talks about it because Minnesota is in general under the radar. But this, I'm telling you, is super fascinating uh, to watch. Sorry for all you Minnesota sports fans uh, to have things falling apart like they are uh, right now as the T-Wolves have lost three straight and Nikola Jokic is just absolutely dominating them and looks likely to take his nuggets to the Western Conference Finals after winning game six. Uh, All right, love all of you. I got to sit down. I've got a busy day kind of letting you know um, I'm going to be doing Clay and Buck for the next three hours. Got a bunch of advertiser meetings. Then uh, I'm going to be on Martha McCollum right off the top at 3 Eastern, 2 Central, 1 Mountain, noon Pacific. Uh, You might have seen me on Sean Hannity last night. I got tons of Fox News hits coming up. Um, and uh, I will see you guys tomorrow. Should be a regular time for OutKick on the Thursday edition. Uh, Appreciate all of you. This has been OutKick the Show. Check out CrockettCoffee.com. Go subscribe. You'll love the coffee, I promise. DBAP, unless you need to ask BAP.